sky high housing and rent costs dominating debate at the final question period before MPs head home for the summer. Let's bring back the front bench to unpack the significance of that and why it may be. Stephen McNeil, Gary Marr, Garatan Singh and Marika Walsh are here. Gary, I think it was this exact panel convened maybe six weeks ago to talk about the political debate around housing and the cost of housing right now. It has almost been stagnant since in that the same back and forth that was we just played you probably could have played six weeks ago and maybe even six weeks before that what does that tell you i think it tells you that uh, the federal government has only so many tools uh, with which to uh, work on this issue uh, and really they do need to work in my opinion with municipalities and provincial governments to try and find solutions collaboratively and i you know i i have some some sympathy for federal governments that think that they have lots to do with this. Uh, but, you know, part of it is construction, as an example, the permitting process, how long it takes to get, uh, you know, a, a house permitted. Uh, and do you have the people to actually build the housing that you want? And at the same time, the federal government is wanting to increase the number of people that uh, immigrate to Canada. I think that's a good thing. But our housing starts keeping, uh, keeping pace uh, with the number of people that are entering Canada? And I think the answer is probably no. So we've got to figure out the human capital side of it so that we can actually get through construction. And we've got to deal with uh, permitting and regulatory processes and zonings uh, that are uh, in our large, particularly in our large cities uh, like Toronto and, uh, and uh, Vancouver. I get the sense, Garotten, though, that the complexity of it also means for the opposition that it, it is a real vulnerability for the government and not just the complexity of it their response to, to the issue of cost of living you know b before more recently i think provided an opening for the opposition and what we saw today from the conservatives in particular was like you know if cost of living is the main issue for canadians they made it all about housing today why, why do you think that is well it's confusing when the conservatives are so vocal about an issue that frankly they played a part in creating like this issue of housing in Canada is this untold crisis that is the result of decades of bad decisions by liberal governments and conservative governments and Mr. Polyev was a part of a government that also made decisions that led to this crisis this is something that's been building for years the fact that people right now who are making you know professionals who are making very good money are unable to afford a home who are at the verge of being homeless right now uh, it's just truly a, a really deep issue in our in our in our nation, and the federal government can take action. They they need to transfer more money to the provinces around housing. They need to make more act. They need to take uh, more direct steps to making sure that this crisis, which is not going away anytime soon, is resolved and people have a safe and secure place to call home. The one thing I, I noted today, Stephen, was that I, I thought that the government, and particularly the Prime Minister actually, who it was very much between the Prime Minister and the leader of the Conservatives, Pierre Polyev, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau was more pointed in his retorts to, to uh, Mr. Polyev. It looks like uh, almost they're, they're more prepared for this to be something that Mr. Polyev will focus on. And it's not like he's been hot making a secret of that. He did it all the way through his leadership and then e ever since. Would your advice be to the Liberal government, like the federal government, to, to go hard back at Mr. Polyev on this? Or, or how, how should they handle it? Well, uh, the debate today sounded like the federal election has already started. Uh, there's a back and forth that I think will be uh, part of the debate. The Grand Night, to disappoint you, but New Democrats have a hand in this as well. Many There are many provincial governments. I live in a province that had a Democratic government, so I think we need to be careful. Uh, and and uh, this has been decades in the making, and there is no short-term fix. Uh, there will, it will require, as Gary said, a level of collaboration amongst municipalities, uh, both uh, provincial and federal governments. But let's not forget the private sector. Uh, who will play a huge role in this. Uh, there's a myth out there that the private sector is just some boogeyman who's out to have a greedy profit. Uh, the fact of the matter is the solution. Should they make a profit in the in investment? Of course they should. Uh, but the biggest issue around housing is supply. Nothing We can sit here and talk about there's very little triggers for government. We brought in rent subs that we could put in, this idea that government's going to be able to, which the rent subs supported those who were renting houses and uh, offset based strictly on income. Uh, you know, you could supply the problems with this large amounts of cash. They don't have the people to build them at this point. We're seeing pressure on the private sector. But if we want to say that this is all going to rely on the public, 
uh, side of our economy to fix this problem. Uh, we'll be talking about this in a decade from now. This needs to be an all-in private sector, public sector collaboration on how do we deal and how do we put supply in the marketplace so that Canadians have options. And one final thought I think that all of us should be worried about is looking at interest rates. Uh, for those who still have, that are relying on mortgages that are in three and four years, they're coming to be renewed. They've been stress tested against a very low mortgage rate and an interest rate that is about where we are now. If we continue to get a climbing interest rate, this pressure is going to actually be, and people will be brought into this conversation who right now don't think they are. And that should be Well, worse. I'm glad that Stephen, yeah, I'm glad Stephen's bringing that because I was just, we just are on the heels of one interest rate hike. It's anticipated there could be another one as soon as a few, uh, you know, three weeks, from, three or four weeks from now in, in July. I, I feel like if we think that this is the big issue at this moment, if we keep seeing more hikes, mm -hmm. my goodness, how much more of an issue does it become? I don't, I can't think of anything that people are more consumed with right now. Yeah, and I actually think that today in the House is the signal for the opposition pivoting to the bread and butter issues that are facing Canadians as they go on the barbecue circuit. I think the focus of the last month on foreign interference, on controversies that appear to Canadians to be more within the Ottawa bubble has not served either the NDP or the Conservatives in the last by-elections. And we see both of them shifting to housing, which, as Stephen pointed out, does not have a quick fix and means will be more political pressure for the government because of that. And so I think that there is a huge political opportunity for the opposition to push the government on this. And I think the Liberals are becoming more aware of that vulnerability. It was something that had very little profile in the last budget, and I'm very curious to see whether this cabinet shuffle reset includes something on housing that's as well. A, that's a great point about the last budget. That's a good thing to note. Okay, I'm gonna leave our discussion there. Thank you so much to the front bench. Really appreciate your time this evening. Garatan Singh, Gary Marr, Stephen McNeil, and Marika Walsh on the other end.